Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's event with Leila Kobo, the content director of Nexos Magazine. In case you're not familiar with Nexos, which I'm sure all of you are, but just in case, Nexos is the only Spanish and Portuguese language magazine that connects North and South America with links to the rest of the world. It's an amazing publication. Leila, we're so lucky to have you. How are you? Um, hi, Dennis. So nice to be here, everyone. Thanks for being here. You know, it, it's so nice to have you. We have 45 minutes today, so let's get into it. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your professional background? Well, I, um, I have a mix of, um, well, first of all, I'm Colombian. I'm born and raised in, in Colombia. I came here to go to college, and I have dual degrees in both journalism and in music. And, uh, and then I got a master's degree from communi in communication management from the Annenberg School at USC at the University of Southern California. And I've been doing journalism for a long time. <laughs> 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 and uh, I, well, gosh, it's been 20 years. And I started uh, in television. And then I moved to the Los Angeles Times where I was a metro reporter. And then I locked into a wonderful job at the Miami Herald, moved to Miami. I was their pop music critic for a long time. Um, and then concurrently with Nexos, I also handle all of Billboard's Latin content. And uh, so it's, it's, a mix, it's a mix of backgrounds. And I, I also write books in my spare time, which is what I love to do. Let me make sure I understand this. So you have Nexus, you have Billboard, and you write books in your spare. How do you have spare time, Layla? That's what I want to know. It sounds like you're very- I don't have much lately, but, but Nexus has an advantage, which is that Nexus, um, I don't know if all our listeners are aware, but we're a bi-monthly magazine. So we publish six times a year. And uh, if we publish monthly, I think that would be a whole other story, but we publish six times a year. And so that- does allow for some breathing room in between, which is uh, for everyone involved here, good and bad, because it, it allows you time to pitch me. And, but it also means we work with a lot of lead time, like a lot of lead time. I work with four months of lead time because we publish every two months. Okay. Uh, audience members, before we move on, Layla's Twitter is up, Layla Kobo, so be sure to follow her. And also, the way that we're going to do questions today is tweet them in to Max Wengeli Digital. You can see it on the screen, Max Wengeli DGTL, hashtag PR webinar, and we'll take your questions at the end. So Leila, Nexus Magazine is unique in that it's a bilingual publication in both Spanish and Portuguese. Can you tell us about the challenges and opportunities that this presents? It's a challenge. Um, because working in two languages is always a challenge. Um, I did it before. Uh, when I was at the Los Angeles Times, we had, that's how I got my start, actually. We had a publication called Nuestro Tiempo, and it was um, in Spanish and English. And, uh, and it's always a challenge when you're working between languages because there's a lot of translation going on and there's a lot of, a lot of back and forth. And so there's room for error. You have to be very meticulous. And um, the big disadvantage uh, in my mind with Nexus is that it limits what I can write because since we have to do everything in two languages, I can't write as long as I would like in one language which is, it, it would allow me more space if it were one language. Also, Spanish and Portuguese, people think, oh, they're so alike. Well, they're not. Um, so I need to have a team that edits everything in Portuguese and copy edits everything in Portuguese and proofs re proofreads everything in Portuguese and a team that does it in Spanish. Um, at the same time, what, what's interesting, of course, is, is that I think that with Latin publications or Spanish language publications, we tend to focus on things that are happening in the quote unquote Latin world. And often Brazil and Portugal are not in that equation because they're in a different language, but they really are part of the same family. Brazil, of course, is the largest um, country in, in Latin America. So, um, we get to cover Brazil, and Brazil is a huge destination for American airlines. So this is our way also of, of 
covering Brazil and giving it its due. You know, it's interesting that you say that because Brazil is obviously a huge country, a big part of South America, as you mentioned, has a totally different language. Um, and Brazil is, is, is kind of in a world of its own in many ways. How do you address the needs and interests of your Brazilian readers? I think Brazil is my biggest challenge. Uh, I'm, ve I'm being very candid here. Um, it is because I'm Colombian, I am based in Miami, so I'm not as, I, I would say, in, in, imbued in Brazil as I am in other territories. Uh, so Brazil is a challenge for me, but I try to, to do it as best I can or as best we can. We do have um, people in Brazil that work for us, and uh, and all are proof writer or, or all our proofreaders, all our copywriters, all our editors of Portuguese are Brazilian. So I do rely on them quite a bit, and I ask them, you know, what's going on, what's happening, what do you think? I ask for their opinion a lot. We also have a sales team in Brazil, and of course, American also has a big. Brazilian contingent and uh, and when they read the magazine they also give me feedback they sometimes give me ideas so we I try to do it by by having people that are local informing me sounds great so let me ask you another question Mexican soccer player Giovanni dos Santos is on the cover for the August slash September issue uh, mm -hmm. Many other stars, including Ricky Martin, have made the cover as well. How do you and your team go about deciding who makes the cover? Well, before I tell you that, I, I have to point, since we were talking about Brazil, Giovanni dos Santos is a great coincidence because he is Mexican, but his dad is Brazilian. That's why his last name is dos Santos. So it was really kind of a great uh like the planets align with Gio Los Santos because we were looking for a big Mexican personality. We were looking for somebody, you know, we were, we wanted an athlete because we hadn't had an athlete in a long time. And then we were able to get him and he's half Brazilian. He's born in Mexico and his mother is Mexican. So we thought, Oh, well, this is great because here we have the best of two worlds. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's just an example of this doesn't happen very often, but in this case it did. But our covers are very celebrity driven. Um, I'm sure you guys have noticed. Once in a while, we go out on a limb and we have somebody that's less celebrity. Uh, we've had, for example, we had a wonderful um, ballet dancer uh, a couple of years back. We had Chef Aaron Sanchez a couple of months back, although I would argue that he's a big celebrity chef. We've had Olympic athletes on the cover, but by and large, the cover of Nexus is a celebrity cover. And uh, we try to make it different kinds of celebrities. I, I lean a lot toward music, and I also think music is one big unifying element of Latin culture. So music is, is big on our covers, but we try to have artists, we try to have TV personalities, and we try, and I'm saying try because we're not always successful, but we try to have um, personalities that, that span the continent, that are well known, not just in one country, but in many countries. In other words, we want people that will be recognizable, but that will also bring an element of surprise. We don't want to have someone who's had three million covers unless they have something kind of really new or different to say. And, uh, and a big, big factor in our, our covers is um, accessibility and timing, we do require an original photo shoot. Um, and this is true of all Inc. publications because uh, Nexus is part of Inc. So we like to do our own photo shoots. So we need people that are available, that are willing to sit down and do uh, you know, a cover story and to do a proper interview and that we can go in depth with. Ah, okay. Well, you know, that's so interesting because you're right. There are publications out there who will put anyone on the cover and, and it's really not even a story so much as, well, it's a story, but it's not an exclusive. There's nothing new. That, that's, that's interesting. And can you please walk us through the team at Nexus, you know, full time versus any freelancers versus any syndication that, that you might have just to get an idea of kind of your 
magazine newsroom, shall we say? Well, Nexus is a very, it's, it's, I would say it's more freelance um, than full-time simply because of our function that we are a bi-monthly. And we do, however, we share resources and space with Americans, other magazines, which are celebrated living and American way. And we all have the same office and we all work in the same room. So I work very, very closely with the editors of both those magazines. We share a lot of resources. We share the art department. We share the photo editors. Uh, we share our managing editor. And then the bulk of my writers are freelancers. We do not do syndication. Okay. Um, and for any freelancers listening in, uh, how can they potentially submit stories or, or hope to, uh, you know, work with your publication? Well, and this is really important um, because this is one of the, the things that define uh, Nexus and, and all of the ink publications, I think. Um, but this definitely defines Nexus and American Way and Celebrated Living. And uh, first of all, it has to be a destination that we fly to. And this does not include code shares. Um, and I'm kind of smiling as, a, as I say this because I cannot tell you how many times people write me and they say, but it's, it's on your map. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> but it's a code share. So I'm not saying that we never include a place we don't fly to, but there has to be some kind of link. You know, like if you're a one hour drive away, of course we can drive. Uh, like for example, two months ago, we had a wonderful feature story on Hirona because Game of Thrones was coming back, the new season, and they filmed so much of that season in Spain again. You know, they've been going to Spain for quite a bit. And so what we did is we focused on this beautiful town called Hirona, which is a 45 minute drive from Barcelona because it was a big scenario for Game of Thrones for the last season. And so we anticipated the new season and we said, and by the way, here is beautiful Hirona, which has been transformed through Game of Thrones. So obviously American doesn't fly to Hirona, but you fly to Barcelona and then it's a 45 minute drive. Uh, so we'll do that a lot. Or for example, we may do a story of uh, the drive up from Los Angeles to San Francisco, because that's such an iconic drive, of course, and, and we fly to LA, we fly to San Francisco, et cetera. So there has to be some connection to a place we fly to. If it's a country where we flat out don't fly, it's very hard to get it into the magazine. And uh. then the other thing that we really, really look for, which um, is part of the DNA of the magazine, is there has to be a reason for the story. There has to be some kind of timely reason for the story. I understand that sometimes people go places and they're excited and they call me and they're like, oh my God, Leila, I went to the most amazing place and I wanna write about it. And I'm like, okay, why are we writing about it now? What's happening with this place now? So we look for a reason, even if it's a tenuous reason, but I need a reason. Like, are they celebrating an anniversary? Is there, is this hotel new? Is this a new route? Is this a new road? Is this a new menu item? Whatever it is, but give me a reason for us to write about something um, at this point in time. And then lastly, we do have a section for columnists, and these are more freeform articles, I would say. And, uh, and I highlight different columnists. I have like a rotating cast. They're very good writers. Um, I have Adriana Larota, who's a wonderful columnist from Colombia, and Janet Delgado, who's a beautiful writer. She writes once in a while. Ismael Cala writes once in a, in a while. And, uh, and they do write about different things, and it's more about the writing and the personality than the destination in those cases. That's really interesting, and, you know, it makes sense that, you know, and there, and there is something really charming about flying to one destination and yet dreaming about being in another and sort of being in, in this world of travel. It's a very cool state of mind. So in the latest issue, speaking of travel, uh, the latest issue has a great story about your native Colombia, specifically Medellin. And uh, it mentions the Museum of Antigua, uh, a f you know, which is a fantastic art museum. Um, how do you decide? Well, you, you kind of got into it, but um, 
in, in a story like that where you say, okay, we're going to cover any given city, Medellin, Miami, you name it, how do you go from that to saying, okay, there's so many things to cover, which, which five or 10 things are we going to mention in this feature? In this particular story, um, it was about Medellin in a little tour led by Juanes, the Colombian uh, pop star. So Juanes um, had released his new album and he was launching his tour because he released a new album back in, in, um, in April. And, but he's launching his tour now actually in, in September and it's gonna be, a, uh, I mean, it's going on right now. And so what we did is that we went to Medellin and Juanes took us on a little tour of his favorite locations in Medellin. So this was kind of a, a, a great story, I think, in the sense that we got the celebrity component in there. We got a big celebrity that people are hopefully interested in reading about. And we got kind of a personal look into him because he spoke about his childhood in the city and he took us to places that were important to him. Um, so in this case, Juan is curated the locations. But when I work with other writers in, in other cities or in other countries, and when we do these kinds of stories, which is like five places to see in Puebla, I really let the local writer guide me. Um, and I have to trust <laughs> that they know what they're doing and they know what they're saying. Because some of these places I've been to and some I haven't and some I know well and some I don't know at all. So it's really a question of trust. I have to trust that my writers know the place and they know what they're talking about and I'm kind of putting myself in their hands. Uh, so uh, I have to be very certain of who is writing these stories because they've been there and I haven't. Absolutely, and, and that's so interesting. You're right, Latin America alone, let alone the rest of the world, such a big continent, so diverse and that's so interesting that you you really trust the expertise of your local writers um and you know dennis sometimes I, i'll go online you know and i'll do my own searches like i'll google a destination and i'll try to go as deep as i can but at the end of the day i want something i don't want what's in every story i google because then what's the point i mean i i want my writers to be on the ground discovering something new or if they're not discovering something new then saying something that i wouldn't know or bringing it from a kind of a different point of view yes there are stories that have to have certain things uh you know you need to have I, now i can't think of anything um i don't know the eiffel tower in paris right I'm just kind of making that up because that's not necessarily so. Having said that though, we do try to put something in that's new and different, because if not, what's the point? If not, I should just syndicate a story, right? Instead of assigning a story, an original story. You know, that makes perfect sense. And you know, since we do have an audience of PR professionals tuned in, uh, may, can you tell us approximately how many PR pitches do you receive on a weekly basis? And how can publicists be most helpful in communicating with you and your colleagues? Well, I am very much an email person, so email works wonders for me. I usually reply, and if I don't reply, it's because sometimes I don't see it, like sometimes I, I missed it or whatever. But I always tell people, if you really need me and I haven't replied, just email me again <laughs> until I do. Um, but um, but pitches anything that's new, anything that's opening, anything that's like something different will strike my attention and anything that meets my deadline. You know, the deadline really is a killer. A lot of times, like right now it's August and I'm getting pitches for September and well, that's gone. I mean, the, the August, September issue is already on planes. So the timeliness is very important and the kind of, kind of grabbing my attention and saying, have you heard of this? This is completely new. This is a great destination. Um, I get a lot of pitches about products and we don't do that many products, I have to tell you. Um, but once in a while, if it's something super innovative and different, I do. 
So I guess it's just kind of um, zeroing in and, and thinking of things that would be attractive to readers who are reading in Spanish and who are reading cross-continent. Okay, that's interesting. So in other words, pitch ahead, realize that it's a magazine that obviously has open dates and closed dates for every issue and, and try to bring something unique to the table. That's, that's really interesting. Um, in, you know, let me, audience members also, you see it up on the screen, but tweet in questions, tweet in questions to Max and Gary Digital, uh, use the hashtag PR webinar. We'll get to those in the end in this fascinating conversation. Um, Layla, you know, you mentioned that you also have a billboard background and, you know, your, your publication obviously gets into entertainment. So, you know, just wanted to address that a little bit. So, um, uh, YouTubers uh, are massively popular in Latin America, particularly with the millennial crowd, but probably with everyone. For example, the MTV, the recent MTV Premios de Miaos, the Millennial Awards, were hosted in Mexico City this year by YouTubers Juan Fazurita and Lily Pons. Why do you think that vloggers and other social media celebrities are taking over Latin America? Oh, well, because Latins across the continent are really, really big on uh, social media and, uh, and on YouTube. I believe, and I don't have the data right at my fingertips, so forgive me for not giving particulars, but I do believe we over-index and uh, we, they over-index or Latins over-index. And if you, for example, look at YouTube's uh, list of the most viewed music videos at any given time since that list started coming out, which is a year ago, you will see that half of those videos are Latin. Well, right now the most viewed video in the world is Despacito. So um, there is an over-indexing. Latins are avid consumers of music and music drives a lot of this content. And um, and as far as the as the vloggers, YouTube is just such a popular and easy to use channel. And anyone in Latin America that has mobile phone will be on YouTube, and especially if they're that if they're that age. So, it's a really important audience. I have to say that in Nexos, I haven't done much with YouTubers and and with bloggers, but it's something that I that I'm going to start to do. Okay, that's so interesting. And, you know, you mentioned uh, Despacito. There's also Mi Gente by J Balvin, which is killing it right now. There's so many different... Great song. <laughs> great song, so catchy, so, so fun. And, uh, you know, he, here's what... You know, since you do have a, a, a music background, I, what, I, what I wonder, is it, is it that more, a larger percentage of Latin America has come online? Is it that reggaeton among other music is just better? Like, why is this working around the world? It feels like the world has Latin fever in the, in the music department right now. Well, it has. And, and I think that what you said first are more Latin people coming online, they are. And I think that that happened in the last two years in Latin America with better uh, broadband access and uh, more smartphones going into Latin America because if you recall like three years ago there were a lot of phones but they weren't necessarily smartphones now Latin America has many more smartphones <clears throat> and it just keeps growing and growing and growing and Latin music is really it's like a song like Despacito who doesn't like a song like Despacito I mean it doesn't matter what language you speak it just calls to you because Latin music, especially when it's danceable, when it has that reggaeton beat, it's just very broadly appealing. So you have a lot of people, first of all, you have an entire continent tuning in and you have a way to measure it, which before you didn't. And second, you have a big audience that's not Latin, that's also tuning in. And uh, another factor that is gonna sound a little crazy maybe, but somebody mentioned this to me and I thought, I buy this, is that, Zumba has had a big effect <laughs> because Zumba is the biggest exercise craze or one of the biggest exercise crazes in the world and Zumba is everywhere and Zumba plays Latin music. So I think Zumba has also helped popularize this. Wow, that's, 
You know, that's, that's so insightful. I never really thought about Zumba. Actually, that's so interesting. I wish I had made, I, I had come up with it, but someone else told me that actually. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so uh, back to back to your team in the newsroom. Does Nexus Magazine use an editorial calendar, or how do you all go about content planning throughout the year? We do use an editorial calendar. Right now, I'm planning the December January issue, even though we're still haven't closed our October November. Uh, so, but right now, I'm in the planning stages for December January. And uh, how we decide, it's, it's several things. One, the timeliness, of course. Uh, second, the mix of the magazine. Sometimes I'll have a great story and I'll think, oh, this doesn't go with the magazine, uh, with this issue, because I already have too much of this, and so I hold it. Um, so it, it really is, um, it's a process that's always in flux. And it's very possible to get things into the magazine at the last minute. So I'll give you an example in case anybody has something extraordinary that they want to mention for October, November, which really is closed. But on Friday, for example, someone pitched me this big, um, not Latin, this big mainstream movie star uh, because he's coming out with a new movie. And I said, well, if we can do like a very quick, like questionnaire type thing, and you can get it to me by today, Wednesday, I still don't have it then I'll open up the page. Uh, so it's that kind of thing. If you give me something that's super compelling, I can squeeze it in. Uh, but otherwise, things, um, you know, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. But there are things that I always look for. We have a section called Cinco Preguntas, Five Questions. And we always look for somebody interesting, cool, insightful that will do the Cinco Preguntas. We have a section that we call Mi Ciudad, where we have somebody talk about a city that they know well and this somebody can be a writer or it can be a celebrity it can be many different things so there are set sections that you can pitch for and of course we have our covers and uh, we always have a lack of women in the covers guys so if you have wonderful women that can be a good cover by all means let me know we'll find you some women we need the women folks if you're listening in <laughs> Uh, I've been lucky with the women lately. It's like the I we get a fantastic candidate, and then they can't or they the timing is off. So I, I need women. We'll get you women, Leila. I promise we will get you women. Um, let me. So before we go into audience questions, there there was a, 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 something I wanted to ask you. So in your June issue back in 2016, there was an in-depth interview with Cynthia Hudson, the uh, SVP and general manager of CNN in Espanol, uh, as well as the Hispanic strategist for CNN US. Can you tell us how did this Q&A come about and uh, how do you go about choosing who makes it in such segments? In this case, that Q&A was proposed to me by my deputy editor and because we were looking for someone who wasn't a celebrity. You know, it was one of those issues where we had a celebrity, like there seemed to be celebrities everywhere, and we wanted a personality that wasn't a celebrity. And I think I said I would rather if it be a woman. And then Cynthia came up. I forget what it was that was happening with CNN at the moment, but I thought it was great. You know, we thought there's a lot of people that don't realize that that um, that CNN in the Latin in the states is headed by a woman, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's how that uh, Q and A came about. Fascinating. Um, so let's go ahead and take a few audience questions, if if you don't mind, Layla. Um, so the first question is: Let me just see. We are in Dubai. Does that work at all for your publication? Have you covered the Middle East or North Africa at all? Oh, that's interesting. You know, that is a great question. And I, we haven't done anything in Dubai, and I think it's because we don't fly to Dubai. However, Dubai is such a big destination that I would say, because this is a conversation I wanted to have, let me find out about Dubai, because this is kind of an ink corporate question. 
and I will get back to you um, on Dubai specifically. I will say that as far as Northern Africa is concerned, um, security is an issue. So not too long ago, somebody had pitched me a story on Egypt. I forget what it was, but I passed because at that point in time, there were security concerns with Egypt that something had just gone on. So we are sensitive to that kind of thing as well. Okay, uh, we have a similar question, except they're asking about Australia, if Australia is at all, um, you know, a possibility if, if that's code share or if, if you fly there. And if it's no, possible. we fly. We fly to Australia and that is a possibility and I haven't done anything in forever. Okay, well, there we go. Any visitor in convention? Actually, so there's, um, there's an, here's an interesting question. How can visitor and convention bureaus be most helpful to you? Oh, they can be very helpful to me in, in many ways. We've done, we do take um, fam trips. I don't do very many because I don't have much time, but um, I, I encourage my writers to take them if they come about. What I always tell them is, ask me first before you take a fam trip because what we don't want is for our writers to going or me or whoever it is, you know, going on this great fam trip and then saying, oh, sorry, we can't write about it, right? I mean, th that is just not going to happen. So we do try to determine what the coverage will be uh, or at least commit to some kind of coverage before we do these trips. But visitors and, and conventions uh, bureaus are very important. Um, and, uh, and I think they can be very helpful. I'll give you an example. Uh, I won't mention the country, but um, I had a personal vacation that I took earlier this year, and it was my vacation. And, and I emailed the visitors uh, bureau from this particular country, and I said, I'm going. Is there, you know, since I'm going already, you know, I had bought my tickets, I had booked my flights. Is there anything that, that I should go see or that I should know about so that this can be a win-win? You know, like I'm going on my holiday, and maybe you can... Uh, tell me to go to XYZ and uh, they really were very unhelpful so I ended up doing my whole my itinerary on my own which is fine but like in cases like that um, I, I encourage my writers if they're going on holiday to if they discover something wonderful to write about it I mean not all trips can be can be press trips I guess is what I'm trying to say and if we go on a genuine vacation and we ask for your guidance please give it to us because I think it will ultimately benefit you and it will benefit my trip too. Absolutely. And, and it's a shame that, that they weren't helpful because you're right. There's so many city, state, and national visitor and convention bureaus who are great, who are just looking to show a different side and promote their city or their community. And, and they do wonderful work. Um, I'll give you an example of a story that's going to run in our October issue because this to me is a perfect example of of something that wasn't planned, it wasn't requested, it wasn't pitched, but it ended up being a beautiful collaboration. And uh, one of my writers was in, in Paris and he wrote me and he said, I just went to this wonderful place in Paris and it's this old station that's been remodeled and... Uh, and I would love to write something about this. And I wrote him and I said, okay, but what's the timeliness of this? And uh, he looked into it and it turns out that Paris in the last 24 months, there have been all these instances of old places that have been revamped and remodeled and readapted. And he worked with the city of Paris and they put him in touch with the people that have been working on revamping these old railway stations. And the last one reopened just in April. He turned the story in last week. And it's a beautiful story. And it had, at least from what I'm reading, it seems to me like he had the full support of, of the city of, uh, of Paris and tracking down the people that did the initiative and, and in speaking with them. And we have a great story with great pictures. And frankly, I read it and I'm like, I want to go and visit these places and see what they did. But that's a great example of something that wasn't pitched by the municipality, but when we went to them, they were more than willing to help because they saw a mutual benefit. Ah, uh, that's so that's so interesting. And you know, we have a we have a question about Brazil, which is a great topic. Um, 
The question is, how do you incorporate the culture of Brazil along with the other culture in Brazil, which is the uh, large presence of African culture that is prevalent in Brazil? When you think of Brazil, for I always think about the African culture because it is large and, and emerged and at times so, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm just going to cut it off there. This looks like a good question. We'll just let, uh, I'll, just to finish though, it says it is so prevalent through dancing, food, and the history. So, may, so the question it sounds like is just uh, how do you incorporate, you know, the diverse cultures of Brazil, including African culture? You know, I have to tell you that I don't approach Brazil that way, but that is a great question though. That is a great question because I haven't thought about it that way. I kind of, I'm opportunistic, I, I think would be the, the word to describe how I, I, how we cover Brazil. You know, like we have, we have had several Brazilians on our cover, but we haven't done anything specifically about that. A story that I wanted to do for a while has been Carnival in Bahia, um, but I haven't done it. So I'm really open to pitches. If you have ideas on ways that we can approach this, I am super open. Okay, and and uh, since you mentioned car uh, 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 carnival over there, what what specifically interests you about that? I haven't been to Bahia, and uh, all my musician friends say that the absolute best carnival in Brazil is in Bahia. I have no idea if this is true. But they keep t saying that it's just the most musical and all these great stars, you know, like Yvette de Sangalo are in that carnival. So I'm just very curious. I would love to go one day or assign it or have someone cover it in some fashion. Amazing. Yeah, that sounds so interesting. Any Brazilian folks, please, by all means, send Layla those kinds of pictures. So uh, you said the criteria, someone's asking, you said the criteria for Cinco preguntas is in, in is somebody who's interesting and cool. Uh, can you maybe uh, elaborate on that? Uh, oh my gosh, we do. I know that that was really vague, right? Sorry about that. <laughs> but there isn't like a set criteria. We do. I, I think Cinco preguntas is a place that allows us to go a little bit into outlier territory. Uh, for example, in the upcoming issue, and I'm, I'm giving you secrets on what's coming in the upcoming issue, but on, in the upcoming issue, we have the director of Miami City Ballet. And uh, this is, she's a woman, and they've actually been talking to me about her for two years. So don't lose heart if I don't cover a story now. I mean, I only have six issues a year, so there's only so much I can do. But um, it's this woman called Lourdes Lopez, and I really think it's it's very interesting because she's one of the very few female directors of a major, you know, world-renowned ballet. And the Miami City Ballet is starting their new season in October. So everything kind of coincided. And so we have Lourdes Lopez in this, in this um, edition of Nexus, for example. In the last issue, we actually had Julio Iglesias, of all things. And, uh, and... I would have never thought of having Julio Iglesias for this, except that they pitched him to me and I said, okay, we'll turn it in. And she turned in this really, I think, beautiful interview with Julio, where he was very candid and he spoke very beautifully. And that's the current issue. So it can be all kinds of different things. Um, I think it can be clothing designers. It can be uh, politicians. Uh, we did Jorge Ramos one time. It can be uh, fashion designers. It can be uh, people that run foundations. It can be executives like Cynthia. We really can go out on a limb. It could be bloggers, you know, like that's a place where I should have a Lele Pons if I don't have her on the cover, for example. Interesting. So we have a question, not to put you too much on the spot, but we have a question. Uh, can you, uh, can you, sorry, it's a long question. Let me just shorten it. Can you tell us about your work at Billboard? Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, in Billboard, and it overlaps with Nexus in a good way, I think. Um, in Billboard, I, I oversee all their Latin content and programming. So Billboard is a music uh, brand, so we only do music. 
and uh, anything that has to do with Latin music, I oversee. And, uh, and this has turned out to be really helpful for Nexos because a lot of times um, I do have access to, to, many, to the contacts for many of these big stars. And, and lucky for us, they read Nexos and they all want to be in Nexos. So that, that is a wonderful thing. My challenge with putting music people on Nexos is that the time frames are different. Um, a lot of times in music, we work with very little advance. So they'll say, oh my gosh, I want, can, would you consider X for a cover? And I'll be like, well, yeah, but the album came out last month. Like, what am I going to write about? So we don't like to write about stuff that's old and kind of already has been done. So that's we, so it's kind of balancing the two things. But yeah, that's what I do at Billboard and, and, um, and oftentimes people pitch me things for Nexus and sometimes I'll write back and I'll say, you know, this would also work really well for Billboard, for example. So yeah. I think they help each other. Um, there's, a, there's a question. Um, okay, it, it, they're saying they have, a, they have a unique hotel in Chile. And the question is, number one, do you cover Chile? Number two, what makes a hotel unique enough to be worthy of, you know, a mention, a feature, whatever the case may be? We definitely cover Chile and um, many things make the, the hotel worthy. I have to say that I prefer when someone has actually stayed at the hotel because then they've experienced the hotel and we're not writing off a press release. I do understand that sometimes, you know, these hotels are in faraway places and we can all be there or the writers having, haven't been there, but um, especially if it's something new that's opening, if it's something different, we do, we, we're very open to writing about it. And, uh, but we're, ex it, it doesn't have to go through me either. Like if you know a writer that already writes for me and who are gonna be there for X, Y, or Z, then feel free to, to pitch these places to them. Fascinating. You know, there's, there's a, just to sum up this question, and audience members, thanks for all your questions. And Layla, obviously, thank you for your time. You're obviously a very busy person, and we, we do appreciate it. Um, there's, a, there's a question about, oh, mi, uh, uh, mi Ciudad. Can you talk a little bit about that section? Mi Ciudad is a section that, um, we created it's a very flexible section and um, and I love it because it allows us to put in their things I've been talking about pegs and pegs and pegs all the, the entire hour right and why are we writing about this now me see that is the one place where it allows you to go a little bit into I went to this place I discovered this amazing thing and I'm dying to write about it. And if they tell me about it or if I experience and I think, oh my God, this has to be written about, this is the place to do it. <laughs> yeah, so Miss You That can be, we approach it from different ways. Like for example, in this issue that's coming up, we have a celebrity. Uh, we have Becky G talking about her Los Angeles. And so she gives her very specific recommendations like her insight places of the places she loves to go. Um, the last issue, the issue that's currently on the planes, it's Edinburgh. And uh, what we did is since Edinburgh was having its uh, theater festival this month, uh, someone from Edinburgh wrote about their city. You know, he grew up there and he wrote about like all these little places where you have to go if you go to Edinburgh. Like, where do you have tea? Where do you have uh, haggis? That kind of thing. And then we've also done Miss You That where someone just goes to a place that they love and, and they're dying to write about it and, and it's just compelling and so we end up writing about it. For example, um, a couple of issues ago, I had a writer in Florence, Italy, which by the way is not a place we fly to, but Florence is such a destination that that's one of those places where we cover Florence just because everybody who goes to Italy ends up in Florence at some point. But um, she went to Florence and she found these secret bakeries. And it was such a great story about how they found the secret bakeries and how you have to go after midnight and look for them and there's no address and you kind of smell it and you have to ask around the street. And 
it was such a great story that I said, oh no, we have to put this in the magazine somewhere. And that ended up being a Mi Ciudad. So different things. But Mi Ciudad lends itself for a lot of flexibility. And I would say that if you have something that's really extraordinary, um, that doesn't quite fit anywhere else because it's not newsy, it's not opening, but it's just really something, it can go there. Long-winded answer. <laughs> no, that's a great answer. And it's so interesting hearing about things that you wouldn't think about, like underground bakeries in Florence. What a, what a fun story. You know, we have a final... Yeah. We have a final question, which is so appropriate. Uh, someone, someone just tweeted in, can you share Layla's email? I can't uh, seem to find it online. Now, Layla, if, if, uh, uh, if, if we do have your permission to share your email, I'll be happy to blast it out to everyone after the event. That's not Absolutely. Please do. It's going to be it's a long email, so I think it's better if you blast it or else someone will definitely get it wrong. But it's Layla.cobo at Inc global.com so yeah audience members don't worry don't stress you will get it you will get it in the follow-up so don't even worry Layla you know we're we're at the 45 minute mark here you know it's been such an interesting conversation and we've spanned the whole world and thank you so much for your time and all of the insights that you've shared with us today thank you Dennis and one thing that uh, may be interesting for our listeners too is um, I said before that I work very closely with, with Bill, who's the editor of American Way, with um, Eric, who's the editor of Celebrated Living. And one thing is we don't tend to share content. Like for example, if Bill knows I'm doing one thing, like I'll tell him I'm doing this, are you guys planning anything? Because we don't like to have the same contact, uh, same content in the magazines. Sometimes we do, but it's more often we do not. But I'm mentioning this because sometimes if you pitch something to American Way and it's not quite right for them, you feel free to ask them, do you think this would work for Nexus? And vice versa. Because I do forward things to him and he does forward things to me. So there is a connection there that you can feel free to explore. You know, that's, it's so helpful that you're saying these things because just having received some emails before the event, I get the sense that a lot, a lot of PR folks seem, think that it's like impossible to reach you guys. You're not o open to things. You're so massive that you're just in your own world kind of, you know, cr creating stories. But it sounds like you guys are, are very open as long as these things are unique. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, I don't answer all my emails. I'm not going to lie to you. I answer when something perks my interest. And a lot of times what I do too is I save them. You know, I think, oh, this could be interesting. And then when I know that we're doing something with a city or when I'm going to a certain city, I'll write and I'll say, hey, I'm going to be in town. You had written me four months ago. <laughs> and uh, is it possible to check this out? And sometimes I have time, sometimes I have not. But that also happens a lot, you know. And, 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 and when I say something new, like if it's a new hotel, well, if it opened up in the last eight months, to me, it's still new, especially because we publish only, you know, six times a year. So I can't possibly get everything into every issue. I just can't. Mm. Well, Layla, thank you again. I, you've been so generous with your time and a big thank you to our audience and everyone have a great afternoon. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks so much, everyone.